Hi everybody and big welcome to CDHTV gameplay where everything is weird. Today, me, Retric and Pontus, if you can find them, are joined by uh, that direction, I guess, Tangelo. How's it going? So I'm playing Mono Red Magda Brazen Outlaw. This is a kind of toolboxy but also turbo potential commander that you search out and find various artifacts or dragons. The big key is to have a artifact dwarf that you can basically tap and untap with the clock of omens and from there you generate if i can find the clock of omens finding clock of omens is key in this deck there clock of omens and with this you can make infinite treasures basically and from there you can search out basically your entire library or various forms and win in various different ways so today i'm bringing back heliod heliod was actually the deck that broke a lost streak i had in a league so has to be fate, has to be good, right? Me, I'm back with Tim Nathrasios, Chain Stasis. So this deck seeks to generate infinite mana, one of which is a single cost card called Chain Stasis that you can use to with along with um, Bloom Tender or another creature to generate infinite mana. But we also have Devoted Druid and some other lines to make it interesting. All right, we're back with Thrasios, Rograg, Polymorph. Pretty basic list here, but we are, we have, We've made, made a bunch of changes to make it a really efficient list, a lot, a lot closer to how Rogsai has been, has been um, building their lists recently. So hyper efficiency plus polymorphs equals win games, hopefully. Alrighty, so this hand is bad. Not, uh, not no fast mana, just polymorphs. Nothing to really get there. Let's move. No, this one's not really any better. We've got a Mox Opal, an Ox Diamond, but nothing to turn on the Opal, and we can get up to three mana, hopefully even if we turn that on. We're looking for four, we need Polymorph mana, so away it goes. If only we weren't going first, but even then, I think we're down to a five here. Yeah, we're going to five. So with this hand, I'm having to pitch two, but we can get that opal online but I, i'm not wanting to play defense grid there's the only thing this hand offers is like maybe putting together like some thrasios grind activations you know get that four mana up by turn three i guess that's that's just not good enough we'll go to four yeah yeah okay i don't mind this four we're probably pitching uh probably should be pitching gamble yeah pitch three pitch pitch a, pitch a land gamble curse mirror it's not great, uh, but at least we get a turn one talisman with three mana available. Do we need to? Do we need to go harder? I don't think we can afford to go harder. Let's see. If we keep the gamble, say we get rid of this, it leaves us turn one gamble and a one and three to land four mana on by turn two. Man, I don't like it, but I feel like at this point that's really all we can hope for. Start getting thrasis activations. We have a mana positive rock with uh, mana mana of crypt. Yeah, that's what we're going with. Why not? First seven. Here we go. So, not too hot at all with the first seven. We'll have to pitch because we have one land. We have some pieces that are interesting, but there's really no, no gas here. So, let's go ahead and pitch. So, I'll take a risk here. I like every single card I have in here. Maybe not Emergence Zone, but we do have Kinnon. And we can get out a Dork on turn one, then slam down Kinnon. Maybe we draw another land. If not, we put in Emergence Zone. We have Spellseeker, which we can use to fetch up Decon or Tainted Pact, something like that. And also Leyline in the Void. You know, I don't play it that often in these pods and things like that, but I think that given that metas just love, and especially our meta, I'd say, like on this channel, loves our graveyards. We love doing stuff with it. I think it could be pretty disruptive. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I'm going to keep my second seven here and um, yeah, have some fun. All right, Pontus, go ahead. Let's draw starting seven. This hand doesn't really do anything for us. We have a Jumpstone Caverns as a premium action, which is nice, but like this is a turn five heal of flip at the earliest, as it seems. So that's just not good. Go to second seven. Once again, a hand without any mana. We have to mull this. This hand is closer since we have some acceleration, but still not really enough. We just have two mana in this hand and nothing really to do with it. I guess we could like maybe hope you play some doing turn two, but like that's not good. Let's go to five. So I was considering keeping this for long, this hand for a long time, and it is possible that I sh that I should, but I still think this is so bad that I'm just gonna mulligan it anyways. I think there are plenty of fours that are better than this, but their fours aren't great. So the main thing is that I think the best outcome for Fimage, or like the best outcome to count on, is like a Magda, and that's not really great. 
So I'll mill again and hope for something a little bit more powerful. But there is a huge risk that we just don't find anything, because this hand mulligan's pretty bad, as you've seen. But usually better than this still, so I don't know what's happening. Going to four. You see? Always mulligan. This is the best hand yet. Uh, it's actually a pretty good hand. We're one mana off just casting Heliod and flipping in turn two. And we have a turn one fish. Those are two things I like. This is a clear keep. This is easily the best hand we've seen so far. And it's, yeah, it's good. Let's keep it. Go to four people. Follow my lead. This hand contains the condition for a keep. Because we do have a, a turn one dork, uh, dwarf, I mean, sorry. And then, yeah, that's it, kind of, honestly. But you kind of want to have more. Now, Jeska's Will is not bad. It's definitely a good card together with this commander in general. But we can sometimes get a little bit better. Like, you're keeping this if you already mulligan down to something like 5 and you enjoy Jeska's Will. But I'm going to take a mulligan, actually, and see if I can find something better. And this looks already great, honestly. We have Springleaf Drum. That is amazing with Magda. We have Mana Crypt. We have... Universal Automaton and a Mountain. We have two really expensive artifacts in our hand. God Pharaoh Statue and Spine of Isha. Oh, it's uh, so hard to pronounce this one. You'd rather have those inside your deck, but it's fine. The already, other cards here are already amazing. Then we have a Changeling a Spell. Uh, up to two target creatures each get plus two plus zero and gains all creature type until end of turn. That's actually really good. So I'm... 100% going to keep this. We already have the Artifact Dwarf as well. I think this is an amazing hand, like a snap keep every single time. So with that, let's start the match and uh, take it away, Tangelo. I have a pregame effect. I'm going to put a Leyline of the Void into play. Oh yeah. When you said pregame effect, I automatically moved to the most normal one. This is like very rare to see. Cool to see too. That's what I'm here for, my man. That's what I'm here for. Alrighty, so we're gonna start off. We'll draw. Here's a volcanic island into a gamble. And then let's discard randomly. Aha! Discarding a talisman. Not happy about it. Cast a mana crypt. Pass. Untap and draw. Alrighty. We will do a flooded strand. And I'll crack and fetch. Fetch up a tropical island. And then I will tap that for a bop. Okay, bop resolves. I'll pass turn. I'll go to my turn. Land for turn will be a island. I will tap it to cast a Mystic Remora. With Mystic Remora in play, I will cast a Jude Lotus, and then I'll pass. Draw a card! That turned great. Red Mountain, Mana Crypt. You can draw Pontus. We're gonna red and two colorless, have one colorless floating, cast Magda. With the remaining colorless, we're gonna put the Spring Reef Drum into play, and you can draw a card again, Pontus. This is one of those. Amazing Magda openers. With Spring Lift Ram and Magda, I'm going to generate one red mana and a treasure. With that, I'm going to cast a dwarf, a 1 1 dwarf for one red mana and a changeling automaton. And here I pass. Alrighty. One tap. We will. Yeah, it took three. Uh, Winds up teeth and I'll crack it, finding a tropical island and casting Thrasios. And we'll pass the Os. Alright, so tap and draw. Land for turn is. An emergence zone. I'll tap my tropical island for Fenhorn Elves, and after that, I pass. Go to my turn, and an upkeep. I will pay for fish. Then I'll draw for turn. Land for turn will be a city of traitors. I'll tap it to cast a Grimondleth. I'll tap Grimondleth, casting a Azuri Signets, using the colorless floating to tap Azuri Signets to cast a Felor Stone. Then I'm passing turn. Untap. Heads is damage. That's heads. I take free. Draw a card. So we can't combo off this turn because we are not going to be able to climb to the magical five treasures yet. We're going to have three and then pass this turn. What we could do is put God Pharaoh's statue into play and that is going to hurt all of our opponents as uh, spells becomes very expensive. That could be good, especially if they are going to board wipe because if they board wipe I'm very much out of this game. The problem is if I play God Pharaoh's statue I uh, have to consume a few treasures to be able to cast the thing. And it's not actually stopping Pontus that much. It's God Fairy Statue is something that Heliod plays through pretty easily once he gets going. The other two guys are going to suffer from it quite a lot though. 
And I'm kind of greedy. <laughs> I kind of want to have my treasures and pass turn and look like the threat. Passing turn with three treasures means that I'm going to be the threat in these guys' eyes. So they are going to use whatever interaction they have against me if they have any. So I actually think that the safer play is to put Cold Fairy's statue into play. I have a cursed mirror that I can use to become a copy of something cool. A creature with a nice ETB of sorts. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for the God Fairy statue actually. That is a kind of safer route. Pontus is the only one that doesn't really have blockers. So I'm gonna send two dwarves at you Pontus punching for a total of four. No blocks, take four. I will generate two treasures. I will use this and Magda to generate one more treasure, floating a red mana. And one, two, three. I'm going to spare one treasure to cast God Pharaoh's statue. I cannot pay for Mystic Remora. But this is a good stax effect. People are going to be kind of locked down a bit. Then I'm going to my end step. My opponents are losing one life. And I pass the turn. I will untap. Be just fine with my life. And I'm passing the turn. Let's untap and draw. Okay, so I had a total blunder there. Basically, when Mons casts God Pharaoh statue, which we can see, see right now, I should have put that onto, uh, I should have put this Enlightened Tutor onto the sack, but I did not. However, I think we can maybe, we can kind of play around it a little bit by putting out Kennen. We're gonna have to pay two or four to put him out, which sucks. Maybe we can't salvage this. Yeah, I should have totally just played that uh, at the time. And then I know Basalt will be more expensive, but if we sort of wait, run the risk of this being discarded or something like that. So um, I think we got to still slam down Kenan and see what happens. But just want to acknowledge that little goof. Wah. Right then, I will put a Gemstone Caverns into play. I'm really nailing it with the lands right now. I'm going to tap these four and cast Kenan. I pass. Go to my turn. Upkeep. I'll pay for fish. Then I'll draw. Land for turn with Scalding Tarn, which will trigger the City of Traitors. Go to Exile. I will fetch my Scalding Tarn. To Exile. Finding a Tundra. Then I will crack you Lotus, tap these two and one more to cast my commander Heliod. And then I am passing turn. That's my turn. Untap, heads is damage. Heads, I take free. So with Cursed Mirror, I actually think we have it. Because it will be the a dwarf. And with that we have five treasures exactly. And we have enough mana to smash this, more or less. Yeah, it should work out. The question is if they have interaction, something to like either stop me in any shape or form. God Pharaoh's statue will kind of protect me in a tiny way, as it will be a little bit more expensive for them to do things. So for example, Tangelo is actually the only one who could potentially interact with me. He doesn't have, he mulliganed really deep, so I don't know what he has in his hand. I don't actually have to go for it, but there's a problem if I, do, if I, I'm becoming more and more of the threat, so to say. And what people do is that they're usually being greedy and avoid interacting until the last moment. So if I accumulate four treasures this turn, don't go for it. They might really do everything they can to stop me. So I think it's, it really feels like a very safe moment to go for it with protection from the uh, Godfrey statue and Tangelo basically being the only one that can interact here. I'm going to cast a Cursed Mirror. I'm not paying for Mystic Remora on this one. So we'll pay three and show you an offer you can't refuse. Oh, I don't right. think that's, this works. It, it, you're right. it you're actually right. works. Right. Right. This is so amazing. It works, you're but right. it doesn't work. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Well, then. <laughs> Do you have no, a I different don't. one? I, don't. I can. <laughs> I can actually Thrasios, but then I'm under. Uh, yeah. I'm under the statue. So. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, oh my god. I'm so happy that the one interaction you have is this one right now. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I have REB as well, but... Oh, yeah, like, I'm, the, I'm not blue. These don't, these don't help. Oh, uh, my God. yeah. It's so sad, because if I had one more mana too, I would have also been able to interact with Moonsnare Prototype. Mm. Yeah, God, I, I, I expected that the God Pharaoh's statue would be good uh, to combo for right now, because you're the only one that can interact. So even if Pontus exactly. draws yeah. into interaction, he won't be able to cast it anyways. So we're not con countering the uh, Cursed Mirror with an offer, because that will backfire. So instead, it comes into play as this Changeling Automaton. And then this Cursed Mirror can't tap for red mana, but it can go to combat. So I'm attacking with everything that I have at Retric. Now Retric is obviously going to block and try to kill Magda. But before he gets to go to blockers, we're going to generate four more treasures climbing up to the magical five 
And with that, we're sacrificing all five to activate Magda before blockers. So this is how the combo actually works. We're going to activate Clock of Omens to tap this one and this Godfairy statue to untap my Universal Atoma Automaton. After that, we're going to activate Clock of Omens again using Clock of Universal Automaton and Springleaf Thumb to target an untap on Universal Automaton. However, we are also generating a treasure from this as this becomes tapped and generating from Magda. Then the Clock of Omens activated ability resolve untapping Universal Automaton. Now I can tap treasure and Universal Automaton, activate Clock of Omens again, untapping Universal Automaton and generating a untapped treasure. So from this I can generate infinite tapped treasures. Not untapped treasures, but still infinite. Now, I don't have infinite mana, but I have infinite Magda activations. So what I'm going to do is find Mask with Nexus first. With this, I can find any creature from my library, even Sorn, because Sorn will now be a dwarf, a, a dragon, so to say. So I can find Sorn, and then I continue doing the same loop, but this time I'm generating two treasures, so one treasure will become tapped and one will be untapped. So from this point, I do also have infinite mana. Now from this point, I can find Twin Shot Sniper and, and uh, Tell Yilad Stylus. So put target permanent you own on the bottom of your library. And with that, we can put Twin Shot Sniper back into the deck. And then I can infinitely search out and find Twin Shot Sniper to deal two damage to any target infinitely. So even before Redrick gets the option to actually block, I kill him and everyone else. And I can untap my uh, Telegilad Stylist infinitely with my Clock of Omens. To make it keep activating and putting my Twin Shot Sniper back into the library infinitely over and over. Uh, GG's Magda wins. Round two. This hand is really good, honestly. So we have a turn one Metallic Mimic with Ancient Tomb. And then we have like turn two Magda into more dwarfs. We also have this roaming throne, which means we have more dwarfs and it's increasing the amount of triggers basically with Magda. We don't really have much else than that, except like dwarfs and lands. So the hand is risky. It doesn't do anything else but being doing the Magda game plan basically. So there's a huge chance you get interacted and thrown out of this game with this. Like if we put all of these into play and we start trying to like win the game or put an enormous by basically building up a huge board state of creatures and they just do one board wipe, we're more or less out of this game. So I think this is a very risky hand regarding that potential blowout situation, but I'm still going to keep it because it's still a very explosive hand with Ancient Tomb getting Metallic Mimic into play early and then continually developing kind of efficiently forward. So I do think we should be able to win somewhere around turn three. And that feels still pretty safe. So in the end, I'm uh, keeping this hand. Let's try starting seven and hopefully not go to four this time. Doesn't start that well. Um, yeah, no mana, no real acceleration. They can't deal in light and two to, to find more mana, so let's go to second seven. Well, this one is actually pretty close. We have a lot of stuff we really want. Uh, Where to win is, is like one of my favorites, like to take cards for this deck. And we have the like smothering tie, the range captain, and the wheel. So like they have everything we want, we just don't have the acceleration to get there. So sadly, we need to go lower. So I kind of really want to keep this hand, but on the other hand, it is just mana. We don't really have any payoffs. So while it's really explosive out of the gate, it's actually pretty slow. Yeah, I think it's just too slow in general. Like we do de develop a lot of large mana, but we have no draw, we have no Heliod engines. And also casting Heliod is kind of awkward in this hand. Like either we go turn one, uh, Ursa Saga Mox Diamond, we're monolith, we always do. But either we go turn to Gilded Lotus, which isn't a Heliod unless we draw a second land, or we go turn one Relic, which also is only Heliod if we draw a second land. So it's, it's interesting on with us drawing a land in, to, in the first two draws, and also finding an outlet at some point. I think that's just too clunky overall, so I'm going to Mulligan this, but it could have been good, I guess. But yeah, I think it's just too clunky. So good, fine. R5, once again, doesn't really do anything with two lands, which is nice, and the image. Uh, kind of similar to the five we had last game, where 
It still stands true. The film edge is at tops, probably like in Magda, and with Frexen Metamorph. Not that great. I'm going to 4 again. Let's see if the 4 is the best hand once again, or if we just get screwed instead. So th this is kinda keepable. It's basically the same hand again, uh, with the film edge being our, all of our value. We do have some conflict here in that we really want as much mana as possible. We also want the film edge. Also having fears is pretty nice. But overall, I just think a draw engine is so much more valuable than any of these cards. So I'm actually going to go to three. Yeah, because I, I, I especially like on these slow mulligans, I really rather draw cards than have medium to bad to, to bad rituals slash mana. So yeah, I'm going to three. Yeah, this three is not that great, but it's not the worst I've seen either. It's a guaranteed turn three one ring. I could go for a dramatic reversal, which is kind of... I think it's too greedy, but it's also pretty good. Uh, but I think I'd rather keep a second land still, just because that's like lower variance. So yeah, two lands in the one ring. Not my best keep ever, but I actually don't think my worst either, which is concerning. Oh well, keeping a four and a three. Let's go. First seven, we have a lot of mana. Not much going on here. Let's go ahead and pitch and go to second seven. This second seven is tempting. I'm going to talk through it to see if I can talk myself out of it. We have S for Sentinel, which gives us some card draw. We are third, so that's two players before us. We can do that. Um, we have Force of Will, but we don't have another blue piece, so that wouldn't work. We can slam down Thrasios on turn one as well if we wanted to, but where does that get us? That is the question. Um, so I keep thinking about ways. We'd have to do some maneuvering to make it work. Maybe we could slam down Kinnon from Green Sun Zenith and do something like that. But really, there's an, there's an outlet. We don't have anything really to, to work with. So let's go ahead and go to six. Okay, this is much better than the two. You can see we have a terminal risk study, which is amazing. You know, if we're not going first, maybe our opponents don't have sort of a full grip. Everybody is, we've got three people playing, two other opponents, I should say, playing blue and someone playing red. So there is that potential. But we have a few rocks we can slam down um, anyways. So I say we go ahead and keep this one. We've got to pitch one card. So I'm thinking what to do with this. I mean, Psych Rift is good for interaction, but I do have enough pieces otherwise. So I think I could pitch, probably afford to pitch one land. Tempted to do Psych Rift, but it's just such a good piece for what we need later on. And um, we might draw some other cards, right? With uh, Rissic Study. We'll see, unless we get wheeled or something like that. So I will go ahead and pitch. Yikes. Um... I'm going to pitch Hollowed Fountain because I can fetch up something at Wooded Foothills at my leisure. Okay, take it away, Tangelo. So we're going to mulligan this. Nope, not much action. Again with the defense grid in the opening hands. Two mana, turn three Proteus staff into turn four activation. And we don't really have Thrasios grind potential. No, we're going to go to six. No lands. Going to go to five. It's, it's actually very close. Not really. Never mind. Going to five. All right, now here we're looking at, we can turn on Thrasios, but no grind potential. We are not hitting the lands, the, the hands today. Uh, we're going down again, I think. Is the potential four better than this? Let's see, if we keep, we can hold up turn one interaction, turn two Thrasios with interaction. That's not even into turn three act, Thrasios activations, no. Now that's a hand I kind of like. I only kind of like it though. I like Jessica's will. We're gonna keep this. Let's draw a card for turn. Let's do Ancient Tomb, tap it. Metallic Mimic, and uh, naming Dwarf, and uh, passing the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn would be in Ursa Saga, and then I'll pass turn. Untap and draw. Land for turn is a Flooded Strand. Crack and fetch. Tropical Islands, Mana Crypt, Rustic Study. Rustic Study resolves, and I will pass turn after that. All right, we'll draw. Here's a Breeding Pool. And I will just pass. We'll have it enter tapped. Draw a card. Play this mountain. Use the ancient and the mountain to cast the Magita. Brace an outlaw. She enters with a plus one percent counter because of the metallic mimic. We're going to punch at Redrick, the only black player who could be playing Adnos with my metallic mimic for two. And I use the colorless mana floating from uh, ancient tomb to pay for Istic study on my Magita. No blocks. I also generate a treasure that I'm going to use immediately to cast this dwarf. And this time I'm not paying for rustic study. This is a 1-1, one, one, a mountain walk dwarf. Great, pass. Go to my turn. There's actually few, very few draws here I would be more happy about. There are, so, there are some, but not many. I'll cast the Jewel Lotus. I'll pay for rustic for Jewel Lotus. 
Then I will crack the Lotus and tap one to cast my commander. And with Heliod in play, I'll pass turn. I will untap and roll for crypt. Tails, I'll take damage. Actually, sorry, heads before I flip. Heads, I will take damage. I flip to heads, so three to the face. And then we'll draw a card. Land for turn is a wooded foothills. I will crack it and fetch. Fetch to Babayu. you. Now we will tap two mana crypt and tropical island, excuse me. Three, I will cast a green sun zenith for X equals two. Green sun zenith resolved and I fetched up Kinnon. Then I'm going to tap Bayou for one. And I am going to cast this birds of paradise. We're back to where we started folks. With that, I pass. All right, um, tap draw, we'll play land. The gemstone caverns and we'll cast a talisman of creativity i can't pay for ristic uh go ahead i'll pass untap and draw land drop mountain i'm gonna lose two life and pay four mana into this roaming throne not paying for ristic study oh wow roaming throne resolves it will enter with a counter on it because of the metallic mimic and it will be a dwarf so how this works is that once Magda generates one treasure, it's going to be double, so I generate two treasures. So I want to go to combat with all of my creatures straight at Tangelo. This is going to generate a total of six untapped treasures. Now before Tangelo goes to blockers, I'm going to sacrifice one, all of them, uh, keeping one untapped to activate Magda. So from here, we're going to activate Clock of Omens by targeting Metallic Mimic by tapping these two. So Metallic Mimic untaps, but I also generate a treasure that is untapped because... Or <laughs> even though I actually generate two treasures because of um, Roaming Throne. So from this, I will tap these two and generate two more treasures. So I'm going to generate infinitely tapped treasures, but also infinite untapped treasures. With this, I have infinite mag activations and infinite mana. So with my infinite mag activations, I can find Twin Shot Sniper and Tell Yeliad Stylus. And with this, it, this will come into play. It will deal two damage to someone. Then I will activate this artifact to send this artifact back into my library. Activate Magda again. Find this to deal some damage again. And then use some of my infinite untapped treasures to untap this thing. Tap it again. Send this back. Activate Magda. Bring it back. And from this point, I have infinite damage. And I will kill all of my opponents in instant speed. Turn free victory with Magda again. Yeah. So Magda winning two games in a row, being pretty consistent, I have to say. It feels like you only need to mull down to some dwarves. And then, in the end, being a bit lucky. But it's also a deck that doesn't, like, feed Rhystic Study. So it's very easy to play through that. I feel like I'm only shut down by Oppo Agent and... Pot I mean, Magda comes into play really fast. So it feels like I'm getting into play before Dranat Magistrate does. But yeah, it's like creature removal. That, 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 that's like the only thing that really deals with it. And not many people are mulliganing for creature removal unless you're a dedicated control deck. I think a really hard, huge part in these games as well has been that two of your opponents has went to four or lower, yeah. meaning that they don't keep, like when you go to, to five, maybe five, you can find something else. But if you go to four and below, you never have enough room to keep interaction as well. Yeah, yeah or very seldom, which means that you've gone gotten away with two opponents not keeping stuff to interact with you as well. Yeah, I agree. But it's also like, it's very hard to, if you're very consistent and able to win early, it's hard for people's opening hands to be usually able to deal with you. I, I agree with you, Pontus. I've been kind of lucky and you guys have been kind of lucky. On the other hand, Magda, it feels like Magda, like every single hand I've looked at have always been kind of good. I mean, it's a very, it yeah, my desk has a lot of density over time. Like, artifact dwarves were kind of hard to get in the beginning. Yeah. But there's been, like, I think it's, like, three or four additional artifact dwarves since, like, my first got popular. Yeah. Which helps it a lot when that's, like, the one thing you're actively searching for. Yeah, and I think that this uh, roaming throne have been a huge upgrade for Magda, mm -hmm. as it yes, so is a artifact yeah. dwarf yeah. as well as a duplicant for Magda. It also could have been used instead of doing the whole Mastery Mechs of Zorn thing in that first game. Like yeah. it's, it just puts all that package in one card. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't have enough experience playing against it, so I think I took it for granted. I had uh, plans, had it come back. 
take it for granted a little bit. So as I'm continuously calculating data on various things, Magda is actually performing really well. So from 199 tournament entries, that means that there are 900, 199 times someone has brought a Magda deck into a tournament, and the average win rate from that have been 24.36, which is actually pretty good. Kind of crazy. A mono red deck uh, performing. Kind of cool. So these were some pretty fast, clean, simple games. Magda mulligans pretty efficiently. Magda, Magda goes for victories pretty efficiently. And if someone doesn't have an interaction, you're off to the races. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next time. Take care!